Hi, I'm Jeanette Yaff. I am a psychotherapist and I'm also an adult adoptee who was adopted at the age of seven and a half. I was raised in foster care and I'm making this video for teen adoptees thinking about searching for their birth family, searching for their identity, or searching for any answers that may help put the missing pieces back together for you in your puzzle. So the first thing I wanna say is searching is a big trigger word for a lot of teenagers because whoa, whoa, am I, what am I searching for? And what if I find my birth family? What do I do next? So I'm going to explain in very simple terms what searching looks like, how to make it simple, and how to take the sting and triggers out of it, all right? So let's reframe our thinking. We're gonna flip the script about searching. So what I usually do as a therapist with any of my clients is I make something called steps. I just literally put steps on a piece of paper. And searching is comprised of many different steps. The first step is taking the DNA test. There are a few out there I'm going to recommend too. Ancestry DNA and 23andMe. When you do your test, you get a kit, they send it to you, you have to spit in this little vial, you and submit it, you send it in the mail, and four to six weeks later, and then you get an email, and in the email, the email shows your ancestral, ethnic, racial, ancestral history just based on your DNA, where you come from and your 10,000 years ancestry defined in this email. It's incredible. That in and of itself is powerful, just getting that information. There's a second piece to DNA. And sometimes teen adoptees, that's all they really are interested. I just wanted to know where I'm from, what part of the world, what people, are in my tribe, are in my ethnic group, it gives you a better understanding of where you've come from. That it's not what you find, it's that you find. And sometimes that in and of itself is enough. Now, if you wanna take the next step, you would do an ancestral family tree. And this usually is made by someone who knows how to organize and create family trees on the platform for either 23andMe or Ancestry.com. It's complicated. So there are people actually paid to do this. People do it for free for many adoptees and they're called search angels. You can choose to start to do it by yourself. Listen, people learn and you figure it out and you, you can take tutorial courses and you can do it. If you're hitting stumbling blocks, like a lot of people do, you ask for help and you contact someone, usually a fellow adoptee who can help you create and construct your family tree. Now, once you have that, then you're going to see how near or far your relatives, your close family members are. Now, can a birth father or birth mother pop up in your lineage of DNA relatives? Yes, it's happened for some people. Just because it pops up doesn't mean you have to do anything. That's information. And that's the big word for the day. What you're gathering is information. You're doing research, research before you do anything and make any informed decisions about reaching out to someone, emailing, phone calling, or showing up at someone's door. Just because you start the search doesn't mean you're actually finding. Sometimes it takes years and it can be a slow process. So allow the process to unfold. Know that there are steps and you can stop at each step and go, oh, whoa, I'm done. All right, I'm good. I have my ancestry DNA. I know where I come from. I don't need to know anything more. I'm done. 10 years from now, you go, you know what? I'm ready to do this family tree. I'm ready to do that. You find someone and you do it. The next is 
you would if you found a close relative, which could be a third cousin, it could be a second cousin, it could be a first cousin. First cousin is better than a second or third cousin because they may be the son or daughter of your birth parents' siblings. So that's powerful because they may be able to connect you to your birth mother or birth father. So if you have a close relative, you can choose to, at this step, email them. And there's an email message ability on Ancestry.com. And you can send them an informal email, which can say something like, wow, we should have a close DNA connection. Can we share our trees? Sharing a tree means they open up their tree to you and you can take a greater look or your whoever's helping you, your genealogist, constructor tree can take a look at that tree and go, oh, wow, we can add these two or three people to your tree because you're related to them now. And that's when you can email them. And if they email back and they're curious, you can choose to share, well, I was adopted and I'm curious, do you happen to know who your aunt or uncle is? And then you're again, researching, gathering information. Now, if at that point you have even a close person, closer person that you know better, that's when you can decide to email. And I'm saying it could be an aunt, an uncle, someone closer to your birth relative. Or you could email if you do find your birth mother or birth father. Now with this step, I always say you want to have someone assisting you. And that would be a fellow adoptee in a support group. So you know that there's other people that can help guide you, support you. You don't wanna do this by yourself. So now you're going to find others like you, find a support group, find others, so you know what to do next. And then once you've made an established contact with, if it's an uncle, a birth father, or an aunt, you can choose to then say, hey, and maybe this is a matter of five years already. If you email them and you don't get a response, then you may find a search angel, which can, this person can gather more information outside of ancestry DNA messaging, and they'll find their phone number or even address, and that's when you would send a letter. And I have sample letters that I provide to adoptees so they can then send a letter. And in that letter, you would define what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do, what you feel comfortable with. And that could be, I would like to exchange a few letters with you, if that's okay with you. And then you're exchanging letters back and forth. And this could be for a whole year before you're even listening to each other's voices or even meeting in person which might be the next step. Phone call, meet, which is the reunion. But before there's reunion, you gotta go through this, 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 and this. DNA test, constructing your family tree, emailing a close relative, to see if they'll share their tree. Then emailing a person who's even closer to you, an aunt or uncle, once you've established this close relative, then you're definitely gonna wanna find a support group to find other adoptees like you. Then if you're not getting any response from Ancestry, because not everyone checks their emails, you're going to see if you can find a search angel who can give their time as a fellow adoptee or birth parent and look outside of Ancestry DNA for their email or even address so that you're able to write a letter. And if you make contact that way, you could be writing letters for a long period of time before you even meet. And then 
You could possibly then decide after many letters, let's talk by phone, then let's look at each other on Zoom or FaceTime, or eventually let's set a date and meet. If that's on the agenda, if you wanna do that, and if that feels good to you, each step, you wanna be able to ask yourself a question and go, do I wanna move further or do I wanna just stay on this step? You get to decide, you're in control. This is your research, seeking information and seeing what next step you want to take on your search. So I hope this is helpful for all the teen adoptees out there. So searching is no longer a trigger word. It's, hmm, it's a thinking word. Let me think about this. It's a stepping stone process. So if you have any questions, you can email me, Jeanette at yoftherapy.com and I'll put it below. All right, take care. Talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.